and welcome to MTD HQ, where we are back in the studio to film our first socially distanced swap and chip. In today's show, we take a look at the launch of the Vulcan brand by the Engineering Technology Group. Now, we're going to be covering their turning, milling and double column machines. And if you didn't get to see the live show that we filmed last week by MTD CNC, this is going to be a real treat. So before we get started, let's hear from ETG's Steve Brown. So let's find out all about the Vulcan range. But before we do, happy Cockavan Day, Steve. Oh, right, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> what are you going to have for dinner tonight? Uh, lasagna. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're not. You can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. You I, can't. I, I don't know what Cockavan is. <laughs> really? Okay, Seriously. let's move on. Okay, but we do know that you know all about the Vulcan range. So well, where did the Vulcan range begin? What was the first kind of, where did the idea come from? Um, so it's really reached out from our from our customers. So from the product range that we currently have, where we've done many videos before, it's all medium to, to high end um, machine tools. Um, so our customers reached out to us for a very entry level, cost effective machine tool. Okay, and what's the whole range consist of? So the whole range we have turning, um, milling, so vertical machining centres, and and double gantry. So on the turning side, we range from a six inch chuck all the way up to a fifteen inch chuck with a six metre bed. On the VMC side, we range from 400 to 2.5 metres, and then double gantry, we can go all the way up to 16 metres. And are these aimed for job shop workshops? Yes, it's, re it's really a door opener for ourselves. So these are um, very cost-effective, entry-level um, machine tools. So if you start off on, on both the vertical and the laves, um, they're sub 50 grand machine tools. That's where That was my next question just before we wrap up. So price points? So the vertical machining centres range from a sub 50 grand um, machine tool ranging all the way up to 120,000 pounds for the largest, largest machines. The lathes that we have behind us, again, starting from a 50 grand machine tool and we, and we step up from a 250 at 60, a 300 at 70 um, and then it, 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 you can add on some bells and whistles towards, the, towards each specification of the machine. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Well, a fantastic overview from Steve there. And throughout the show, we're going to be reviewing those machines in a little bit more detail. But you might have heard me mention, guys, it's Cockavan Day, National Cockavan Day. Gio's favourite day of the year. I know. I mean, <laughs> to look, be honest, I, I, prefer, I prefer spaghetti, to be honest. I'm not into French food. Oh, gosh. I mean, <laughs> look, look, guys, we've got the van. All we need is the... Chicken! The chicken! I mean, it's a very special day. What are you going to have for dinner tonight? Cock of of course. Yeah, and we we spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Not we, but cock of yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spaghetti, Lynn. Spaghetti. Let's yeah. yeah. have some of Gio's wine, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, okay, so let's talk about the show. It was a great launch last week, wasn't it? Yeah, I was blown away. I saw a lot of your and Paul's preview videos, but to be honest, I didn't want to. I didn't want to take the the edge off the day, so I didn't really do too much research before the day. But when you go there, they've done a great job, they haven't have. they? They have. You know, aesthetically pleasing. A uh, lot of tech in a, in a low price machine. I think they've done a cracking job. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I was really surprised. I think that prior to me going, and and, and Martin and Steve even said themselves, it's an entry level machine tool. So I was going there expecting to see entry-level machine tools and, and in comparison to the Nakamura's, the Quasar's, the Bavia's, they are in regards to them, comparison to their machine, in regards to the capabilities. But as a machine tool, the, the Vulcans look fantastic. High mm. quality, uh, great capabilities, a very large range, as, as Steve mentioned, and, and most importantly, a very affordable price. Mm. And it really fills a gap um, for ETG. For ETG, definitely. Now, um, we are going to talk about the Vertical Machining Centre in just a few moments, but throughout today, I just want to mention that Paul had an interview with Brad Willick, who's the Project Engineering Manager out in Taiwan, and it was quite interesting because he's worked there with ETG and he's worked out in Taiwan for over 30 years. And in his words, he says that ETG have created the best performance to price ratio of machines of this type. And I thought that was really, really mm -hmm. key. And throughout today, I'm gonna to be mentioning some of the quotes that he said. But first, let's look at some of those vertical machining centers. 
the Vulcan VMC 610L, the latest offering from ETG. It's for under £50,000. A free access machine tool with lots of different options and capabilities. So you've got four options in regards to the control system. You can either have it with a Siemens control, Hydenoin, Fanuc or Mitsubishi. It comes complete with a Swarf management system, 610 mil in the X axis for this particular model, 400 in the Y and 400 in the Z. The smallest model is a 400 in the X and it goes all the way up to two meter in the X. This is a linear uh, guideway model but it also comes with box guideways as a, an, another option so you've got the choice of either in every size range in this particular three axis machine tool. The, the tools on a linear come with a BT40 but you've also got the option of BT50 when you go to a box guideway. Lots of capabilities, a very compact machine and a very small footprint all available for less than £50,000. Right, so Gio, you were there, you did the interview with Steve. What are your thoughts on the verticals? Well, I think they're a fantastic machine, Lindsay. And before we start, um, I did make a mistake in that particular interview. It's actually 2.5 metres it goes up to uh, in the no X mistake. axis. <sighs> Um, so you only eat spaghetti, you don't have cocker man, <laughs> what's next? So apologies for that, but yeah, I was, I was extremely impressed, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, not only the VMC, but the complete range that we got to see on the day. Um, we've had the debate in the past about linear versus box. They do both options. So, I mean, you know, from our debates, we've always discussed, you know, which is best. You know, obviously, cutting strategies have changed, mm -hmm. but there's still a marketplace for the box guideway. Um, and they offer both, as with the programming uh, languages, they've got lots of options, lots of spindle speed options, BT40, BT50, mm -hmm. so many different options um, and models and range to suit a multitude of applications. And I think they've, they've really got it right, mm -hmm. you know, with, with this range of machine tool. Footprint. So compact, so mm. compact. I mean, you look at the footprint, so compact, the guarding, I think that they've designed. That machine, effectively, you mentioned they've done a lot of work um, with, with the supplier. Yeah. They chose lots of the configurations, what they believe will work in the UK marketplace. They've got a lot of experience in the UK. They've put these machines together extremely well and really pinpointed key features that they believe will work in the UK. And for an entry-level machine, as mm -hmm. they say it is, which we believe it's, it's, it's better than that, it really you know, fits the bill. Yeah. Um, and not everyone needs a turnkey package. I mean, we all yeah. know that ETG are very- um, Strong at that. Strong, mm -hmm. Turnkey project work. Mm -hmm. They've got these fantastic machine tools, but some people just need a reliable quality machine tool at an affordable price to do uh, a certain job. And this machine really sets people off on an ETG journey and it's imperative that this machine is quality reliable um, and does the job because if they if it doesn't then they're not going to progress to the Nakamura's to the Quasar's to the back mm. so it's absolutely essential that, that ETG need this to work and they would not sell it into the marketplace yeah. unless it had that reliability and quality like you mentioned from I, the guy I think I, I think the key <laughs> Can I talk now? Sorry. Well, sorry. I think you've uh, just taken all of Joe's I, I, I air time. I think the key is that the fact that 18 months, 24 months in development, they could have probably got a machine within two, three, four weeks, couldn't they? Mm. But they've done a lot of research. They've asked their customers what they like in a commodity machine. And ETG's words, this is a commodity machine, entry-level machine. They know exactly what's going to sell in the UK. They know mm -hmm. the market inside out now. And they've gone away and they've developed, um, you know, altered the machine and, and, and bolted on a few of their extras. And, and they genuinely think they know what they want. And if you look at the machine configurator on their website, oh, there's hundreds of, of uh, different options. Well, just to add to all of that as well, from Brad's words, you know, what, what they are doing in terms of quality from the beginning, scraping, ball screwed, linear guideway alignment, geometries, electrical painting, special coatings. So all of the CE stuff, is all checked from the beginning all the way through to delivery. Right, let's head over to Joe, who is talking about their turning lathes. So yeah, we're here at the launch of the new Vulcan range. This is the turning center, the TC200. This one comes uh, equipped with a fanuc control. The uh, OITF Plus, in fact, this is. It's something that ETG did spec on their machine tools. And that's not all on the Vulcan. There's a lot of, you know, they put a lot of finesse, a lot of finishing touches into this machine. This one you can see is TC250M. Yes, this one comes with milling functionality, 
again, fan at control, although there are a lot more options. This one comes with a short magazine Vulcan uh, bar feeder. And as you can see, further down the line, we have got larger machines. Uh, the, the three machines in stock, as well as the vertical machining centers. And they haven't just bought a machine and put the Vulcan badge on it. You know, this is 18 months in the making. They've got staff over in the factory of ETG. They put a lot, a lot of heart and soul into this product. And for what it's worth, I think it's going to go really well. Right, well, thanks, Joe. What were your thoughts then? I was really impressed, to be frank. It, everything Geo, You're not Frank. No, I'm, I'm, I'm Joe. When they said Geo then, you confused me. Everything Geo said about the vertical machining centres is pretty much the same for the turning centres, available as linear machines, as box machines. And the options are staggering. You know, there's, you know, you can have a Mitsubishi control, Fanuc control, and Hydenane control maybe. Uh, um, uh, Siemens control? Siemens no. control. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, yeah, there's so many controls. And they've got three machines in stock, the 200, the 250M, and the 300. Uh, M denotes milling function. So like Gia previously mentioned, not necessarily an entry-level machine. Entry-level when you compare it to a Nakamura, but certainly not to, to a lot of the marketplace. And again, I was blown away. The build quality appears to be very strong. Uh, there were some nice little touches on the fan at control that a lot of people won't have seen before. Mm, touch and yet, screen and everything. Yeah, and just, just the, the range is so vast, isn't it? You know, it, it, they had three machines in stock. I think there's about 15 different variants just, just on the turning centres alone. So, yeah, it, it's going to be really successful. Certainly yeah. the turning centres. I, I see a big market in the UK mm. for that. You know, a high-quality, high, a well-built Taiwanese machine at the right price. I think yeah. it would do really well. I can really just echo what Joe says, really. Not much more to say apart from from the business perspective, again, from ETG. You know, ETG are t t taking people on a journey. And from introducing the Vulcan into a, a small end user company, they're not going to go straight for a, a Nakamura Tomb or, or mm. a Quasar or a, a Bavia. So it's a perfect introduction yeah. machine which takes them on the ETG journey. Mm. And they're, they're full of fantastic, you know, accessory equipment such as the bar feeders, the turrets, the salter turrets, top quality equipment. Mm. Yeah. OK. Last but by no means at least, we're going to be talking about their double column machines. So on the milling side, they're also offering double column machines. Now these can go up to 16 meters by four meters uh, in terms of the table size and the working envelope. They're also multi-axis as well. So they've got uh, indexing heads, manual positioning indexing heads, as well as full five axis heads. Now, wh why would you want a machine of this size? Well, if you're in the mold and die sector, you're a tool maker, you want to do uh, larger components, harder materials, surfacing work, double column machines are ideal when it comes to the rigidity in machining. Of course, the options on the spindle, uh, you can go for a high power spindle or a high speed spindle, all of these available within the Vulcan range. So, Gio, what are your thoughts on the double column machines? Well, I think really this really opens up a completely new marketplace for ETG. This is an offering that they didn't have available prior to the Vulcan range. The Vulcan range has certainly landed, hasn't it, at, at, at ETG. <laughs> I think that I'm oh, looking at some of the, the, the new kind of uh, sectors and that that could really lend itself to, you know, sustainable energy. I, mean, I know Paul mentioned in the in the interview mold and dye but some large components even like the new batteries for for, for automobiles you know big one piece uh, components there's some large components mm. that, that that it really does lend itself to and again with the great quality addition. that's what it is with, with accuracy uh, mm. stability um, and the backup and service of yeah. ETG. Also, just to add to that, I know, Joe, you're going to mention something, but part of Bradley's job in Taiwan is to produce documentation throughout the whole mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking. The documentation that he showed us was about that high. So, and, you know, where they say documentation is a form of quality. So that is kind of a theme running through this. Yeah, Traceability. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I'm done. Well said, guys. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, yeah, exactly that. But there's two things that stand out across the range. You've employed the team in Taiwan, you know, I'm just, they're not buying the products, swapping the bags, they're actually on the payroll in Taiwan. To me, that shows a big commitment from the group, yep. you know, the fact they're investing in people as well as is the products. But if we talk about the double column machines, again, not gonna go through them all, but you've got all the controls, you've got linear options, you've got, um, um, help me out, box ways. Oh, yeah, the box guide yeah, ways. The box linear. ways as well, massive machines. When you talk about industries, it's kind of like, Mold and die, yeah, but it transcends that. It's pretty much any large components. Yeah. You can have different heads. I think there's about 10 different heads you can have, both auto indexing and manual indexing, 90 mm. degree heads. There's 
It's massive. Yeah. Massive. Well, um, to add to that as well, Martin Doyle did do a podcast on the launch day of the Vulcan range. So if you want to know more, head to our channel and have a look for the podcast section where Martin is talking about the range yeah. as a whole. Just to add another plug in there as well, our latest magazine is going to be out very shortly, so make sure you're having a read of that. And don't forget, a lot of it is audioed, so you can listen to the magazine as well as read it. So yeah. Right, gents, we've got all of this wine. What are we going to do with it? Well, I'm driving. Aww, <laughs> I've got the yeah. van and I'm going to take a bo <laughs> bottle home, maybe. You know what he just called you? He just called you a chicken. A chicken? Yeah, oh. yeah. Hey. So, uh, <laughs> congratulations, it is National Cocker Van Day, so we hope you're having Cocker Van, not spaghetti, for dinner this evening. And by the way, it would mean the world to us if you could spread the word about the show. If you've enjoyed it, like it, comment on it, and if you'd like to share it and subscribe to the channel. And also, because we're all together, finally, can we say the words? Cockervan. No, no, not Cockervan, you know, like the end of the show. Ah, yeah, oh, they're forgotten. <laughs> oh, God. Right, ready? Keep, Keep those spindles, spindles turning. turning. <laughs>